Welcome, hola, signors, to the Night of Zorro. Or in this case, the Mask of Zorro. Yes, you're probably wondering, where did a lot of inspiration for some superhero flicks, films, or franchises, or heck, even as early as the comics, in some ways, get their format from? Well, look no further than Zorro. The ever-famous mm-hmm. franchise, which even a uh, certain superhero, I'm sure you know his name, got his direct inspiration from, both in and out of universe. But... Wait, wait, no, wait, seriously, that's where Batman got his inspiration from? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and the, and the Zorro trademark okay. itself, would, and the Zorro trademark itself would cause issues for One Piece, but that's neither here nor there. And if they... anything, that if anything, that Zorro is a lot. Batman, you know, shares also a lot of similarities with Zorro. You know, they... re, rich person who lives secluded in a villa. You know, that is a is a master vigilante that helps the poor. You know. Basically, Dave, okay. So I, I so I barely know anything about Zorro. So I didn't okay, know okay, okay. You can watch the Mondo. The, the Mondo TV anime is actually really good. Yes! That was made the Tatsunoko, actually. <laughs> Basically, right. Dave, it, was, it was commissioned by Mondo TV, but it was actually done by Tatsunoko. That's the thing. Well, it does use a lot of assets that involved. Mondo TV do have. So, hey, it was something good that came from Mondo TV. That's been too. That's been too. I found it on Mondo TV's YouTube channel, so I just assumed they always were involved at some point. It's, so. it's because they were the one who commissioned it. But uh, to, anyway, look to the point anyway. that... Ju- Yes, go ahead, Basically, go ahead. Deads, the thing about Batman is that normally his origin is like, well, his parents get gunned down after they watched an old Zorro movie. Which reminds me, Tio, given how sliding time scales work in comics, how much you want to bet that eventually at some point they're going to make Bruce a millennial like we are and have it be that he saw this particular Zorro movie instead of one of the older ones? I don't even know at this point. <laughs> So, uh, Jova, the, this 1998 film, who was behind it and who was supposed to be behind it? Okay, this film is one that had, I don't want to say development hell, but it had a lot of errors behind it. It was a project that started in 1992 and would only become released in 1998, going through no less than three different directors and quite a few different actors here and there. It began in October 1992, as TriStar Pictures and Steven Spielberg's Amblin Entertainment were planning to start a production of Zorro for the following year. So they hired Joel Gross to rewrite the script after they were impressed with his adaptation of The Free Musketeers from uh, back in the day. That said, at the time, Spielberg was producing Zorro with the potential to direct. That's right, originally Steven Spielberg was set to direct this movie. And given it was Spielberg in the 90s, that could have been pretty awesome. So, Gross completed his rewrite in March 1993 and TriStar entered pre-production. However, um, by December 1993, Branko Lustig was producing the film with Spielberg. And in that point, a director known as Mikhail Salaman was attached as director. And in August 1994, Sean Connery was cast as Don Diego de la Vega, the original Zorro. While Salaman stated that the rest of the major cast would be Hispanic or Latino. Obviously, some things would go a bit awry here, because pre-production proceeded even further in August, when Salaman compiled test footage for a planned 1995 April start date. However, Connery and Salaman would eventually drop out. No doubt, Sean Connery had much, much, much better movies to be in. Like Avengers and League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. <laughs> but anyway, I uh, assume those movies are bad. Yeah. Yeah, so. Oh, basically, they are the movies that pretty much killed Sean Connery's career. But anyway, back to I mean, this movie. They're still movie. bad than Sir Billy, though. <laughs> so anyway, so to replace Solomon, oh, God, I still can't believe he was in that movie. Um, so in comes a director who you may be familiar with. Robert Rodriguez, fresh from the success of Desperado, and it was actually him who signed on to direct with Antonio Banderas. Yes, it's thanks to Robert Rodriguez that Antonio Banderas would star in this movie, and, dweebs and dead, you're about to see why they got Antonio Banderas to play Puss in Boots in the Shrek films. Yeah, basically. Yeah, Yeah, I already (laughs) told them. 
Uh, recently, I showed uh, Dweb's uh, Puss in Boots, my favorite of the Shrek franchise, actually, to Dweb's, and I, yeah, the, and I, we kept making jokes. Hey, Dweb's, did you know that Antonio Banderas played Zorro? Just in case the movie yeah. wasn't, uh, um, you know, on the nose <laughs> enough about it. And I, uh, and I repaid his generosity by watching uh, Shrek before with him, but that's neither here nor there. So, Joe, how come Rodriguez didn't direct the film in the end? Ah, uh, yeah, um... So, Spielberg had hoped that Rodriguez could start filming in January 1996, but the start date was pushed back to July, and the release date was moved to early Easter 1997, which would cause Rodriguez to pull out of the film in June 1996 over difficulties coming to terms with TriStar on the budget. I do wonder if Rodriguez was trying to go for some more of the more <clears throat> a flashy effects that were becoming a trend in the 90s here and there, which... I mean, okay, if I'm to be honest, the fact that they didn't go for that is one of the standing points of this film. But we'll get onto that a bit later. So, unfortunately, he exited. Thankfully, pretty much most of the cast that Rodriguez had assembled himself at this point did stay on board. And thus enters in, finally, the actual director here, Martin Campbell. Oh, but it gets even better. The finished screenplay will be written by John Eskow, Ted Elliott, and Terry Rossio. Based yeah, on the story. He will go on to write uh, the uh, successful Pirates of the Caribbean movies and um, uh, 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 Lone Ranger. I liked Lone Ranger, but still, honestly, hey, some of my favorite writers, one of my favorite directors, one of my favorite actors, all on board here. They even managed to get on Anthony Hopkins. Nice. As well as the ever aging, gracefully, Catherine Zeta Jones. But, <clears throat> without uh, beating around the bush anymore, needless to say, this movie was a slam dunk. Oh, by the way, they also got a composer by the name of, oh, James Horner. So, uh, yes. I... yeah, needless to say, all the pieces were in for this thing to be a success, and let's see, on a budget of $95 million, it grossed $250.3 million. Which makes sense. Uh, again... By the time this movie was released, the Zorro was not super popular, but just enough, you know, to, to gain this kind of amount of money. From what I understand, Zorro was a franchise sort of on the decline, similar to how James it's, Bond it, was on the decline when Martin Campbell came in it to has been consistently back into it. I can tell you, Joe, it has been consistently popular around Europe. Uh, it's kind of like it's kind of like Asterix and those kind of you know comics, uh, uh, Belgian Frank Franco-Belgian comics. Uh, those kind of properties tends to remain in the heart of Europeans for a very long time. So basically, folks, what you want to do is start at the Sphinx logo. I mean, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The, the TriStar tri logo. logo, the older TriStar logo. Three, two, one, click. Also, correction, Pedro, it was, it's not Tatsunoko, but Ashi production who did the, the anime of Zoro. Okay. Okay. Still, it was co-produced on TV. But anyway, I'm personally more familiar with Zoro when it comes to the 50s old series live action. Yeah, you know, it was super broadcasting in my country. So we kind of have a soft spot for Diego de la Vega, you know, fighting against his mortal enemies, including the comedy relief of uh, Sergeant Garcia. Because fat people are funny, you know. <laughs> uh, also, what kind of tile screens are these? It's Did a, someone put the film at an angle? It's a very uh, imposing one. Mr. Projector Man, you might want to... Ah, then, yeah. That sword was super plasticky. <laughs> so, uh... Wow, this, uh, was a, this was a 1998 movie, and yet the... the... And yet the film reel had a lot of grain on it still. Huh. You'd oh, think by yeah. this point they would have well, figured out. Well, Charlie's Angels come out? Because this has the same effect in the opening. So yeah, this movie is actually basic. If I go back, this movie actually is a sequel to the original series. Well, it's yes. a better text was a better text opening than it turns. It's kind of like it's kind of like uh, the Mission Impossible for the movie. So essentially, yes, this one opens up where the original Zorro ends, where essentially this plant of Mexico is finally being freed from Spanish control. 
Uh, depending mm-hmm. on the time, Portugal may or may not have been weeping or celebrating that Spain were being made fools of at the time. Pedro? Mm-hmm. Well, okay, remind me again, what year? Is it, uh, 1892, right? 1821. 1821, okay. Uh, no, by this point, uh, by this point, it had been way, way after the middle, the 15th century. By this point, I think uh, um, both countries were relatively Ooh. fine okay. in terms of relations. So essentially, Spain by all means should be moving out, but the leader, Montero, refuses and is holding course, a power yeah. hold over one last hope. So, uh, interesting, out of the four main actors of this film, only one was actually Hispanic. We've got the other two are, e- the others are either got, the others are Welsh or English. Two? Okay, again. They were selected by Robert Rodriguez, so I'd like to assume that he did know what he was doing, and I'll give him credit, this is one of those cases where the casting is so charismatic and the actors do their bits so well that I can excuse it. Not saying it should be the norm, but this is one of those cases where it was actually good enough to warrant it. And there he is, Rafael Montero, our big bad of the film, played by Stuart Wilson. For, interestingly enough, Armand de Santi was originally cast in the role, you know, the main bad guy from Judge Dredd. Oh, interesting. But, um, but uh, he was doing the Odyssey and, huh. you know, and couldn't do this film, so. Hmm. So that's why, um, so that's why Stuart Wilson uh, came and who had worked with Campbell before in No Escape. So I will say this, this 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 is definitely one of James Cameron's best soundtracks. And you can tell James he's definitely James Horner. James Horner. James Horner. <laughs> Whoops. James Horner. Well, Joe was just worried about Avatar 2, so you can't so, blame Sorry, him. James Cameron doesn't do music. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. Um, you could tell James Horner was coming off of his Titanic score with this one because you can definitely sense a lot of stuff with it. So but does nice this movie feature also have My Heart Will Go On song in the credits? Yes! Uh, yes, it does. Oh my god, it does. Holy oh, shit. Oh, really? <laughs> everyone, oh, okay, really uh, everyone well, was uh, doing that at the time. Well, oh my uh, god. If you go back, well, uh, if you go back to, because James, James Warner actually did compose the music for My Heart Will Go On. He didn't write the lyrics, but he composed the music. If you go back and check his the, the ballads he made for American Tale and Land Before Time, um, that's, it's the same style. That's, this is his style. Yeah, I'd say, okay, it's always a James Warner thing that often he'll make a great score, but he will have a main theme song, Lyrical, that is based around that score. My Heart Will Go On, as you can tell, has uh, bits from, uh, the score of Titanic. And to Thanks, be fair, Celine Dion. The, and, and to be fair, the theme song in this one is based off of a theme sung in this movie as well. Wow, the the governor actually has the courtesy of not exposing the children to the um, execution to hanging. That is the thing that's about surprising. That's the thing about the bad guys in this movie. They are some of the worst worst bouts of scum, but they do remember the wise thing. You want to give off a bit of a charismatic approach, enough so that you don't come off like a monster to the people who you plan to use as cattle. And but yeah, basically I think and there is our Garcia of sorts. Oh, that's supposed to be the equivalent, I guess. Fair enough. Does Zora the I challenge you to a duel thing or no? Basically, he just pulled some peasants at random to be killed. Why? Yeah, that's an example. <laughs> and well, as well, you know, it's like a Harvey Dent said as Two Face. You know, why killing someone when you can use them as bait? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah, hot twist. He was the one who was going to be executed that day. <laughs> so here is Antonio... I'm sorry. <clears throat> Anthony Hopkins as Don Diego de la Vega, the original Zorro. And I do like how there are differences between the two Zorros in this film, as you will come to see here. Now, as for the action, the action is pretty top-notch, and they weren't kidding around. They got the legendary Bob Anderson, who is an English Olympic fencer and renowned Ooh. film fight choreographer to help with the fight choreography for this film. 
Because I think also you are drove. I actually took fencing classes. Yeah. I, I, oh, Jesus. Um, you know, I'll take your word for it. Mm-hmm. And yes, um, many of these. Well, yeah, all of these are done practically. So yeah. Well, I mean, um, I mean, unless you're Star Wars, I think CGI to a um, sword fight is a bit odd. <laughs> That's the thing. A lot of movies were adding CGI to it to a point. To a Those kids where... just murdered people, or at least attempted. They're helping Zoro out. What 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 movie was this rating? Yeah, I was about to ask, especially because I know for a fact that later on we will get some, not necessarily something gory, but something that will not probably fly up too much in a T rating. <laughs> um, we don't rate movies as T. Sorry, sorry, uh, G, I guess, uh, then. It really should be at least PG-13. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking. It's rated PG-13, yeah. It's rated PG around here. You're, and you shall become Robin. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason uh, um, all the actors were cast, I mean, yeah, and Banderas was cast before Campbell came on board. Well, I'm, I'm assuming because you know he's actually Hispanic, um, and he has charisma. Was this his first feature film? What was one of his first? He was technically. Wait, which came out first, this or Rogue Assassins? Uh, Rogue Assassins from... I don't know. You know, okay, you know that that gif of The Last of Us where Joe's doing the whole putting his hand yeah, on his... Yeah, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. that, that's, that's uh, I'm telling you, it's been there. Probably. So yeah, it turned out he, he literally just set it up just to lure Zoro. So Zoro's uh, going to leave him a little message. Is you, he's trademark Z. Spoilers, he will. For the record, in case you didn't know, Zorro in um, in Spanish means uh, fo- basically the fox. Mm-hmm. Okay, I was wrong. I, I, I was wrong. The movie is called Assassins, and it came out in '95. <laughs> so, this, this, so this came out before Zorro. Yes, that said, I would argue that this is the movie that definitely put Antonio Banderas on the map with staying power. What you're talking about, Jova? Clearly, it was Ballistic X versus Sever. <sighs> and, 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 and here, I thought Dwos was going to make that reference. Nah. I guess you can say you guys subverted my expectations. <laughs> so yes, the day is saved. Zoro has won the day. In any the in any traditional Zoro story, this will be the climax. So. And a little trinket. A silver oh, medallion the, it's, to remember him by. It's the Zook from Sandokan. Yeah, Italian exclusive trivia, don't worry. <laughs> Complete with the Zoro cave. Yeah, no, I'm even kidding, Dad. Zoro even had his own equivalent of a bat cave. Again, pro, again, Batman, the creators Bob Kane and Bill Fingers, Bill Finger, actually, they took a huge inspiration from this uh, for their for their superhero. It's a very good reason that Batman got a lot of his inspiration from Zoro by seeing a movie before his parents were gunned down in front of him. So, um. Part of the reason for this film's constant um, <laughs> delays, um, it was mainly because um, people first at first <laughs> thought TriStar changed the release date because they wanted to avoid Titanic. But uh, it turned out it was because there was production problems, plus uh, TriStar's owners, Sony Pictures, wanted the film to release in the first quarter of '98. Huh. Oh. Yeah. You know what's funny? Back I mean, in which which kind of uh, which they didn't really succeed in doing because it came out in July. It's kind of ironic because nowadays releasing in the first quarter of a year is considered not always the best sign. Well, unless unless you're a ha- unless you're a Valentine's Day film. True. Aww, isn't little Catherine Zeta-Jones adorable? What? 
Yeah, that girl's gonna grow up to be Catherine Zeta-Jones. Oh man, some of the green screens have not aged well, though. <laughs> Again, that, I, I'm, that, that's a uh, might it, be yeah. yet another case where it's the the HD quality like, that rules on, that. On, like, on the subject of Martin Campbell films, that green screen was was as bad as that uh, as that scene where Bond's catching up with a falling airplane in Goldeneye. All right, so might as well mention one of this movie's renowned factors is that again. In an age where films were starting to get more on the CGI bus, this is a movie that persisted with practical effects, which is definitely something that is Martin Campbell's strong suit, which really just makes me wonder, why was he of all directors chosen for Green Lantern? Yeah, I don't get that either. So, yeah, no, why, 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 why like, wasn't he chosen for a Batman movie instead? Was that basically the same thought process that had Ang Lee being the director of World 2003? Well, or was um, it something that he wanted? Well, Joe, uh, not even he really did. Oh, so was he? Was it something that he wanted to do back in the day, or was it something that he was more or less approached for? Well, I mean, he was in negotiations. I mean, I'm pretty sure he chose to do it. But then, you know, by the time he realized he wasn't a good fit, it was too late. So it does sound like, I'm guessing, to be fair, the guy who directed a movie based off of the franchise that inspired the format of a lot of superheroes, sure, I guess I could see the mentality of getting him to direct a superhero flick of another masked man. Yeah, probably hmm. the wrong one, though. Kind yeah, of. if it were Batman, it would might have worked, but Green Lantern being a CGI fest, which Martin Campbell isn't that well known for. So yes, today was Zoro's last ride, his last job, and he came back alive. Um, yes, I am sure this will be uh, definitely his last. His Again, last, this uh, should job. be by all accounts, this should be the ending. <laughs> and you could consider it such. And then he get, and then villains come in, find out that he was Zoro, and he gets killed. This is how it works, huh? I'm Rude! Come on! I was just joking. <laughs> Watching me kiss my wife like a creep. Oh, it has to be personal. Well, crud. Why was there a wolf inserting that bit? He literally just found out he was Zoro the same way Norman Osborn found out Peter Parker was Spider-Man in the live-action Spidey flick. <laughs> well, I can't see Anthony Hopkins hanging on a ceiling. Huh. So, uh, someone's gonna die here. <laughs> I wonder how fans of the original series felt about this. Oh, they liked it! <sighs> Okay. Again, it's okay. I think it's a bit of a situation similar to the one on Mission Impossible. If you didn't particularly care or thought the original series was too goofy, I guess it, it can still work. Well, I mean, this uh, is the first. This is the first Zorro film since 1981. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Let Let's be fair to you. I highly doubt that anyone would consider how this treats the original, like how Mission Impossible is treated that, uh, the original. Well, it's a thing, Jova. Again, yeah, treason. Oh. <laughs> God, I'm so sorry, I despise incompetence wait, wait, and everything. Wait, wait, sorry, I missed that. Why did he stab him? Because, because he, he shot had the love, love he, of his life. He actually recently shot Esperanza. Sure. Yeah. Hey, 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 I killed the guy that did it, man. Come on. That's an equal exchange. <laughs> Ow. Literally in the back. It's like, yeah, that's, bro, come on. Th again, that's the thing, though. Again, I'm not going too much ahead of what the movie has to offer, but basically, this uh, movie is essentially a giant uh, 
passing of the torch, which means essentially dumping on Diego de la Vega as a result. Okay, okay, okay. No, I would not say this movie dumps on him. It... Oh, sure. It's a more graceful kind of exit than the ones saw in something like, again, Mission Impossible, but still. Like, it literally starts with the idea that Zorro could never win, at least the original one. To be fair, he was literally caught off guard here. I think the implication is more so, if he had seen this coming, he probably would have come out of it. Especially considering the feats we do get to see him do later on. That being said, the stage is set though. While Zoro has managed to save Spain, unfortunately the love of, the, of his life is killed, and his daughter is taken by his worst enemy. The irony. Oh, that's creepy. I mean, uh, oh, man, I, mean, I can't I mean, see how. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, I mean, it's a more accurate time than to say that someone has their mother's eyes than with Harry Potter. Okay. Uh, uh, I mean, it, it'll be like uh, he, he's as creepy as those older guys in the first season of Pokemon, where every whenever there's a cute girl, an older guy will say, "I can't wait to see you in ten years or something." Oh, okay, okay, okay. He's not going to do that, <laughs> thankfully. I know. It, it's just one of those. Ugh. So that just cut twenty years 20 later. Twenty years later. Antonio, we're not. I told you, Banderas, we're not doing the 13th Warrior again. Antonio Banderas with a mm. mullet and a beard is quite a sight to see. Uh, have you seen the SpongeBob too? No, I have not yet. Uh, which is interesting too, because the 13th Warrior was a film Banderas did um, after this one. Yeah. And. Um, and this and that film was renowned for being one of the biggest box office bombs in history. Yeah, not many people actually saw it. It's fine, just out of the novelty alone, but nothing would, too impressive. Would you say it deserved to be one of the biggest losses in the history of cinema? Okay, Dweebs, I'm not sure if I can make that statement because, again, the, you know, the, how much people go go to see a movie is unpredictable regardless of its quality, you know? So I'm not sure about that. But again, I think it's fair enough to actually give it a look at some point. Oh boy, the Murrieta brothers. So, bit of a fun fact, actually. Juan... Joaquin Murrieta was something of a legend in Mexican history. He was an outlaw, of course, but one who arguably fought for the people, until he was, well, killed, essentially. So, believe it or not, he was based off of... Well, okay, he is what The Legend of Zorro was based off of, surprisingly. So, interestingly huh. enough, here we do have the Marietta brothers based off of that here. It's like, it's like if he made a fictional Cuban... Or vigilantes, and then the actual movie adaptation say that it was a mentor of, of Che Guevara. That's <laughs> weird. <laughs> so, in turn, Batman was based off of a hero who was based off of a real life figure. How many layers are we right now? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should do something more risque. Maybe it will actually. Oh, pocket pistol. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> I mean, that's basically the same shtick that they did uh, with um, with the uh, Sean Connery Dragon in Dragonheart. Uh, why just, you know, being a simple bounty hunter where you can cooperate and, you know, collect more money? By turning yourself in. <laughs> yeah. And they also, of course, fight for the people, so all good. 
So we have ourselves a party of three bandits here and there. Rolling off over here, and of course making sure to oh, humiliate oh, when possible. Oh, oh that yeah. German, that's not just humiliation, that's flat out torture. <laughs> so, it's hilarious because we're dicks are gonna get punched. Or... <laughs> so all is well on the western front and... Oh. Bummer. You know, in hindsight, that wasn't our smartest idea. Bye! Yeah, oh, right. there goes the old guy. This is Harrison Love, played by Matt Letcher. You may know him as Eobard Fawn, a.k.a. Professor Zoom. There is a, yeah. The Reverse people's... Flash. <laughs> and, what, and what? The Flash CW The Flash series. Series. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's him? Yeah. Yes. I actually remember his uh, face. So. Sir, the uh, brother punched down the other brother. Should we shoot the guy who's down? Oh, it's the leader we want. You know, you know, it, it would make too much sense if this was still, you know, an elaborate scheme from Eobard to still fuck up Barry in the future. It uh, was me, Barry. I <laughs> was the one that cast an Antonio Banderas as Zorro. <laughs> still, still, Wait, still less this? convoluted than season three of The Flash. He spits and pretty much commits Harry Carey just to keep him from getting the honor of killing him. Wow, that was the cleanest shot ever. Well, you know, even though he took away the honor of killing him, that doesn't mean we can't get a little prize from it. Yeah, I'll behead the guy. <laughs> no, just take the amulet. Oh, you'll see what he takes. Oh, Ryan, I forgot to. No, 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 no. What, 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 yeah, he yeah, actually like. decapitated him. Believe it or not, this is actually based off of real life well, because like I said, Joaquin Marita was killed by a general by the name of Harrison Love of the Texas Rangers, who did in fact keep his head in a jar. How bizarre. What a charming fellow. Yeah, Marietta was noticeably an outlaw, but some people do question the veracity and sanity of Harrison Love, who literally kept his head preserved in a pickle jar. Mm -hmm. And drank out I of it occasionally, too. Ugh. Was this still the period where the United States uh, were in conflict with Mexico over yep. the territories of uh, sovereign Texas? Okay. Mm-hmm. So, the thing about this story, this is a story of balancing out revenge with justice. A story of, you know, relevancy. Knowing when your time has come, but also knowing when your time is definitely not damn well up, essentially. As you can tell, we do have, at the very least, two guys with a good reason to want some vengeance. Oh, hello. Well, look who's back. Big Dick is back in town. I do like also all the subtle bits of changes that you can tell that time has changed. Instead of obviously the Spanish soldiers, now there are the Mexican personnel in charge. Which Don Rafael has now managed to curtsy some control over. Smile for the camera. <laughs> punish it, the punish it, the La Vega. <laughs> <laughs> Polish Topkins. Ah, uh, yeah, I thought you were going to reference Metal Gear Solid 5. Yeah, that was the one. I am Spartacus. No, you're not. Again, I am Spartacus. Where's Zorro? 
Zara was never just one person. Alright then, find out which one isn't yelling that they're Zorro, because that person would be Zorro. <laughs> right, as I'm sure I, didn't, I was going to say this part, but since you were interrupted, the person who was Zorro is to be executed, so execute them all. I mean... That doesn't sound like the most efficient thing to do, sir. But it frees space, I guess, sir. Huh? Yeah, but yeah, we got a fresh batch of prisoners coming in tomorrow. We need more room. Yes, but that would cause a riot with the Mexican society, and knowing how Santa Ana is at the time, we <laughs> probably wouldn't dig that. Oh, oh was... yeah, yeah, sure. Well, okay, right, wait, was this out. before or after the Alamo? Before. before. But if we'll we do it publicly, publicly like before, we did it's before that. Uh... But if we do it publicly, like we did the, all those years ago, they'll, they'll be serving as an example. And besides, there's no Zorro to whip the men's guns pointing at the execution leader. <laughs> so it will go smoothly this time. Hmm. You need to plan effectively. A what? prison break what? is not exactly easy. I wonder if Hopkins was considered to be no, oh, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, Captain Cold and Heatwave were able to do it. Yeah. I wonder if Hopkins was considered to be Gandalf. Huh. I, I don't remember if he was. You know, Sean you, Connery. Why, you uh, only Sean mentioned... Connery was considered to be this and Gandalf. So. You only did mention, uh, for when we come into Lord of the Rings, only Patrick Stewart and Sean Connery, but that's it. Hmm. Can you imagine if Sean Connery had actually stuck around with this movie? I wonder it's if he'd been in the Avengers. I could have seen it working for the role, to be honest. I do wonder. Would he have been Who? able to have put on a Mexican accent, though? Like, I'll give it to no, him. No, absolutely well, I mean, not. Well, well, I mean, he didn't. Do, well, I mean, he didn't put on an Egyptian or Spanish accent for uh, Highlander. <laughs> yeah. True. Okay, uh, Whoop. weird showing of their feet. What, did did, did, did uh, Tarantino direct that bit? <laughs> Easy <laughs> drug, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not kick shaving or anything, it's just... Uh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. To be honest, the, the, that kind of drug writes itself down. Yeah. So yeah, basically, it's a parallel to the Count of Monte Cristo, complete with how he actually escapes, so basically. Mm-hmm. Which means revenge is next, uh, Yeah, I'm sure people will welcome you with smiles and <laughs> applause. Open tomatoes, maybe. Oh, I mean, they're applauding. Yes, but are they applauding on their own volition? You know, the bald guy kind of reminds me of Seth Rollins' dwarves. I don't know why. It's the smile. <laughs> Seth Rollins. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Is that like a nugget, uh, gold? A golden nugget. It's not the edible kind, is it? No. This isn't yeah. Gets Next Door, unfortunately. Metal, metals are usually not that, that edible, do it. Well, I mean, it depends. I mean, you have those little baubles. All right, everyone, if you whoever doesn't clap, get shot. Fair enough. Uh... Those faces say it all. There you go, Dwibs. That's why they were applauding. But you're the life of a party. Bearing it all, aren't we? Mm. 
Why did you say the name? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who 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 who's the folktale version of Superman so we can cross over with Zora? Uh Peter Pan? No, 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 because Peter Pan's a douchebag. That's and the first drush. <laughs> I'm not quite sure if Superman really had a folktale version based off of him. Like, okay, this... the closest, no, the closest, the closest, kind of closest Peter you got to was Moses. But, eh. Well, okay, okay. Uh, when it comes to, like Jova said earlier, yeah, when uh, you can trace the origins of superhero fiction all the way back to stuff like Zorro and stuff like, and other care, pulp uh, uh, fiction heroes and stuff like that. Um, Superman was really come... pretty much his own thing. Yeah, but when it comes to traditional, the, the traditional definition of a superhero, as in he has abilities beyond the normal man, I'm not entirely sure if Superman was the first, but it was definitely one of the first to have that element in particular. So essentially... Again, I guess, I guess on a... Well, I can't speak it either. Go on, Jova. Oh, he's got the chance. You know what? Fine, I got it. Crossover Zoro with Hercules. Well, but here's his daughter, Elena. Now played by Catherine Zeta-Jones, who, yes, even to this day, has aged remarkably. It's kind of like Rachel Weisz. Some actors really don't seem to age, no matter what. <laughs> yeah. Believe it or not, Will that... Will Smith is 50, and he's still... Uh, besides I, I, the hair, he still looks... Uh, I tend to notice that mostly with Japanese people, where Sakurai still looks the same as he's always have. I know, right? have also, also, you know, Ikoraki. Apparently we consume the souls of the living or something. No, Sakurai ages backwards. If you saw how he looks at his youth, he looks older. Yeah. So here we are. <laughs> yes, let's, let's, here we are, uh, regular viewers. Uh, we have someone from Swansea in this commentary. So, yeah, believe it or not, the villain's ploy here is to win the affection of the people by freeing up California for them to be their own independent thing, while Santa Ana is all fighting with the Americans in the American-Mexican Wars. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh... <laughs> yeah. Not... Not Trump? Basically, Alejandro Morietta is not taking life all that well. Well, I mean, his brother was killed. Yeah. Now, he was originally not of being from historical, so this is a bit of, you know, fiction with the added brother in there. But it's also a way to keep the folklore tale in there. Well, not so much a folklore thing because Joaquin Morietta and Freefinger Jack were real figures in the gang. But the brother was sort of a bit of a mixed up account of sorts. That's right, he was so down in the dumps that he was willing to sell the one thing he had of his brother left just for more whiskey. Wait, this guy... Actually, you know what? I can, see, I can sort of see Sean Connery pulling off this role. So, the, um... So Robert Rodriguez, um, instead of doing uh, this film in 1998, he did a film called The Faculty. Mm. I don't remember that. I mean, it did or if it did pretty well at the box office, had a small budget and made a lot of money at the box office. So <laughs> can't say it wasn't a, a hit. It just didn't review that well. Also, G Jimmy wanted to be killed with a score for this action. <laughs> Not bad for an old man, eh? Yeah, not bad for a man of, um, how old was he at this point? Not sure. 61. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, when, when the film came out, yeah. At the time of this recording, he's now 83. So, probably fitting for what I the character you, is aged at this point. I can tell you that the last movie that he did he has done so far, The Father, he's actually pretty good. Although, um, watch it when you're really in a happy mood. Oh, you've seen that film, here? Oh, this bit. I've seen the trailers for it, but... Uh, mm -hmm. not See, this is one thing I really do like about this passing of the torch movie here. Yes, 
This man has been through some tough stuff, but he doesn't let that change him into something that he ain't. Oh sure, he wants vengeance, but he's also smart enough to know that simple vengeance would be... Well, inefficient to the circumstance. Oh, So it all comes full circle. Zoro inspired the Morietta gang, who were, you know, a real life thing, and in turn the Morietta gang dying out is what will eventually bring back the return of Zoro. So it all comes full circle. Yeah. Mm hmm. It needs a bit of work. It's been through a lot. But I got better. <laughs> Sadly, yes. But I survived! How how's the horse still in condition? Uh, the old horse I'm pretty sure is dead. With a vengeance. Complications that don't concern you for now, boy. When you're talking like that, you make it sound that one day an Austrian will actually take control of California. Imagine <laughs> the madness. Hey, if it's supposed. Okay, it's not even a an S talk, it's a still, you know, <laughs> as a sharp side, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Seriously, though, I really do actually love even the training montages. It's, it's a nice little back and forth between the two eras here and there. What I love is that the old era does get its respect here. Oh, sure, yes, the new era will get its time, but obviously between the two, it's the older era that's the more skilled. Sure. After a bit of a shave, of course. Got me to be ready for the poster, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Faulty <laughs> position will allow that to happen easily, yes. Fun fact, actually, Antonio Banderas himself was a bit of an Olympic adventure for Spain at the time, so... At least he still had to do a bit of training for this one. Like I said, they well, got the legendary Bob Anderson for this, so yeah. Well, what is this core? <laughs> one that has a flavor okay. to it. The, the clapping makes sense, so, you know, traditional you know, Mexicans and Spanish type of music that you can hear, but the, the, the twingling of... Uh... Of the, I think it's a cello. Like, it's weird. Hmm. Just know, without any upper body strength, you could just as easily fall into a pit of fire. This will send still you to don't, well. Still, don't skip like they... Yeah.
Fun fact, actually, the whip was almost not used in the film, but Hopkins did insist that it be used because, well, it is a bit of a flavor for Zorro to use. Yeah, it involves part of a character. Yeah, 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 JD uses the sword and to defend, no, never to attack and something. Take a shower? <laughs> There we go. Prim and proper a little bit. Yeah, we just need to get rid of the bullet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is getting there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, but Bob Anderson was also um, English. Mm-hmm. Okay, another thing that I noticed for the score is that it's some, in some places it sounds a bit like Lawrence of Arabia hmm. for some reason. Perhaps. And actually, not ever was the composer for that, but still, interesting. Uh, the composer of that film was a guy named Maurice Jarre. Oh, okay. Damn, that horse is strong. And so the horse became Zorro. <laughs> uh, sure, why not? <laughs> Actually, you know, in some incarnations, Batman does have a bat horse. And a bat cow, well, the, because Grant Morrison is a bit Does he stick perky. wings onto the side? <laughs> at some point, Wims, so he, yeah, at some point, Wims, he gets a bat cow because it's a cow that has actually a bat shape on, on its fur. And it was a question of his son, Damian Wayne. <laughs> and that's where he gets his bat milk. It's it's a in true tradition of Grand Morrison. It's all fun and good until Damien is presumed dead, so the dead cow becomes a, a tragic keepsake. Thankfully, they brought Damien back. And quote, with quote, thankfully, with the implication that he was trained by Deathstroke. Yay! But it's a I mean, for look, time. his mom and grandpa are the heads of the League of Assassins, so trust me. Might as well. Damien turned out way better than he probably would have. Well, that's because he's the son of Batman. <laughs> and <laughs> of Jimmy... course he you... Okay, believe it or not, Dad, some of his best character development actually came from when Bruce Wayne was dead. Or traveling through time. And basically, he had to bond with Dick Grayson, who was Batman, after he won a tournament to get the cow. And this is how Zoro and uh, Elena first met. So, Alejandro wants to get a horse, just like the original Zoro had. So why not get that spirited black Andalusian? Oh god, this is a horrifying thought. What? Zoro remakes it during the modern day. And now, down the chimney comes, not Saint Nick, but Zorro. And I don't mean like a Zorro, I don't, I don't mean like what we said earlier, with um, like a more Zorro-esque Batman, because at least then, you know, it's, it's technically not Zorro, so it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, simply get the horse, and then sneak out. Easier said than done. Yeah, first things first, you've got to get that horse to cooperate. Huh. 
I forgot. In which time frame the first original spirit, the style of the Cimarron, is supposed to take place? I think that's also in the 1800s, but it's happening, I think, around the time of the Civil War in America. Okay. Don't, feel okay. bad, don't, feel, don't feel bad about that, Taylor. It's abundantly clear that Ori Wallington doesn't know either. <laughs> I know that. I did ask specifically for the original because I know the, the thing oh, about Ori. I know, that, I know. that's my joke. <laughs> it's clear. It's clear that she doesn't know either because, well, just look at that show. Jesus. Uh... Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, just trying to talk to a horse doesn't always get it to agree with you. Yeah, I mean, it's not like you can just go up and say hi. I'm still surprised that the Spear Running Free movie actually did recognize how difficult it is instead of having Lucky just get it right. I mean, one of the few times I can understand it being maybe a bit easy to control a horse in a film is if, you, is if the character has uh, a telepathy for or that. something. <laughs> oh, so like in Beyond Two Souls? Where, uh, or, uh, uh, I'm or, uh, the horse. <laughs> or, um, or Luke and Professor Layton. That reminds me, yeah, Pedro. Do we ever, animals, yeah. reminds me, Pedro. Do we ever figure out what was up with that horse that looked like Adolf Hitler in Beyond Two Souls? No, no, no. He's just there to be your typical wild, uh, you know, hard, horse that's hard to tame. Oh, but I then know, I know, I know. tames it means that she's special and blah, blah, blah. But why did they make it look like Adolf Hitler is my point? That that's, was weird. That's, was. I don't know. Speaking of weird, uh, yeah. Awkward. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> but guys, come on, I'm sorry. Wait, I'm not sorry yet. Shit. Oh, you want to know what I do like about this movie? Nobody ever does the stupid let's attack him one at a time. No, the mooks pretty much do gang up on Zoro and forces him to have to maneuver here and there. And somewhere the executives at Ubisoft are basically shivering and don't understand why. <laughs> actually, yeah, why don't we have a Zoro video? Well, okay, we probably do have some we're old actually... ones. It's we're called Assassin's a... Creed. No, Jova. no, no, Jova, you you also mentioned in Assassin's Creed on SMB. We're about to get actually a new video game based on the more recent cartoon series. Oh uh, yeah, we how are. recent are we talking? Ah, uh, like pretty recent actually. Let me. Uh... I, I I think it's like around like five year stops. So, but yeah, it's a CG animated one. I haven't checked it out myself. Uh... Like the most recent Zora game we got. Was back in 2008 from from uh, 505 Games. All right, so all right, all right. It anyway. it, It's the show called Zoyo the Chronicles. Uh, mm hmm Not sure if that game is out yet. No, no, it's, I think it's supposed to be released next year. Well, hopefully it's good, because honestly, I'm surprised we didn't get more Zoro video games. Like, just look at this action. There is definitely a yeah, ton of potential. Yeah, very potential. Very is definitely potential. Also, I can definitely tell that the same writers who would eventually do Pirates of the Caribbean and Lone Ranger were involved with this. Because it definitely feels in line with that. Mm-hmm. Oh. Well. Ah, I won't point and laugh. And watch him get killed. Do you think we could talk this out? No. H how? Because oh, okay. he whacked him hard and frequently. Oh. <laughs> he wouldn't. Oh, he You're would. You bought the whole he building! <gasps> Jesus. Yeah, a little bit reckless. Hmm. Yeah, and the legend. And this is where the legend ends. Get out of there. <laughs> By his OD. Nah, nah, it's okay. He took out the barrel, which now lets it go to the even bigger stash. Crap! 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? Nice, nice girl. What, 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 what was his mission again? Sorry, I didn't catch that. He was there to get the horse. Ended up doing a bit more than that. Not just that. Yeah. We, 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 we have a Zoro product with a guy running from an explosion. It's like the green truck. It's almost like you aged backwards. Uh. Oh my god, is Master Hero Sakurai Zoro? Sure. <laughs> He's the hero we need, but not the one we deserve. <laughs> <laughs> say, the, say the car actually gets Zoro in Smash. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Teo, do you know by any chance uh, which of the two characters was invented first, Zoro or Robin Hood? Oh, I think uh, I think it was Robin Hood because the folk tale was, uh, you know, from uh, more a couple of centuries times, before I Zoro. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. Uh, but you are correct in you know in, in seeing some similarities. Uh, no, it's not, no, it's because uh, it just reminded me. Yeah, yeah, just like <laughs> Robin Hood. Uh, Zoro also has help from um, oh. a, pri a, a priest. Um, come, on, not Zoro. come on, not Zoro yet. Yeah, play along. He seems a lot more willing to now that he sees that it's Catherine Zeta-Jones on the other end. There we go. Oh, okay. Dropping Lee is definitely older because Zoro was created in 1919. Oh, there's that. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. 1919. Yeah. Oh, it was that early. It was it was that late. Huh. Yeah, I thought, I, thought, I, thought, I thought it was earlier than that. From a pulp writer, actually. Oh see. yeah, that that I know. I'm just. Uh, I mean, uh, usually most of these heroes were invented during the during the 19th century. Oh man. Oh. Well. People with, with black masks are tight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, you're Antonio Bandera, so that applies, but Jesus, dude. Oh, is that what we're calling it now? Just save it, you're horny, for fuck's sake. Well, she, there, she, 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 yeah, she This is a sacred she ground. Did. She did just say it. Yeah. Because she said lustful, which is, of course, a more uh, pure term for it. Yes. <laughs> of course he forgives her. The, the lore works in mysterious ways, or something like wait, that. Wait, uh, wait, wait uh, father, don't I have to, you know... Pray like ten Hail Marys or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, say no, something no, no, like no, no, ten, ten Hail Marys before going to sleep or some shit. I don't know. Huh. Wait a minute. How can you confess that the priest is here? Two plus two equals then... four, damn it. Uh oh. I mean, give hey. him give him credit, it was practical, and he did pretty much figure it out. There you go. Turns out you were just talking to God? I guess so. I have a name, you know. <laughs> Epona. You're offending his feelings. Horse? No, my name is not Horse. Shrek. 
No, no, Don't no. Don't get. Mistakes. Well, that was your. Oh. All right, here you go. I, I love this bit. Fun fact: My mom was actually watching this movie just recently, like a couple days ago, on TV. Oh. Uh. Does she like it? Yeah. Oh, who doesn't? Mm-hmm. Okay. All good. She was lapping her ass off in this in this scene. I take it this oh! all have a full <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, I mean, you nearly had it. Again. Almost, almost there. Well, it's a start. <laughs> it's you're, a start. You, you're, you're asking this? Did this? I take it this all had a Portuguese dub? No. Like I said, but it was... Um, there are very few movies live action that we actually dub. Usually movies that are meant for like an all ages audience like Spider-Man. I like can the Raimi trilogy got Portuguese dubs and they're fine. They're I can, serviceable. I can sort of get it. Dubbing live action is trickier than with animation. Uh, uh, it's, it's, not, not really a job. it's more so the fact that uh, there's not as much of a demand. If 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 a country gets is used to, to do that, Jova, you know, you, we can, we get the hand of it uh, easily. Just for example, mine, France, and Germany. Yeah, yeah Spain dubs everything. Yeah. Not even kidding. Spain dubs l everything that comes towards them. To give you an idea, Jova, like uh, um, people, yeah, Spanish, people Spanish people on the internet will not uh, will always ask, "Oh, do you have this in Spanish? Do you have this in <laughs> Spanish? Do you have this in Spanish?" It's it, they're all. Is asking for they can't handle English just say the last it seems. <laughs> it's a topic that I can also discuss for my country, but in another time. So yeah. Don Diego de la Vega is not exactly impressed. Yeah. I mean I understand that Zora isn't exactly the paragon of subtleness, but at the very least I expect some degree of uh... Of, of, you know, um... Blowing up buildings. Of quietness. I don't expect blowing a building up. Mm-hmm. Needless to say, he does have a point. Zora was supposed to be a champion of the people, not just some glory seeker who was pretty much in it for the fame and whatnot. Up, up, up. We're not doing the second act breakup. Instead, it's time to see if you're really ready. Hey, I said don't attack in anger. I I'm genuinely curious why movies do that second act breakup. They, okay, it, 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 it's more traumatic. A lot, a, lot, a lot of executives think it's good for artificially extending the length of a movie and very, quote-unquote, gives character <laughs> to the people involved. Uh, depend, well, okay, to be fair, it depends on what kind of story you're telling. <laughs> I like... like... Uh... Sorry. I like how even with the spoon, he's able to flick away his sword here and there, showing that, yes, the original Zoro is still just that skilled. But now it's time to test one angle. So yes, he's seen that he can fight a Zoro, but now it's time to see how good he can work with a cover, the uh, secret identity form, and of course as a spy. Yes, you. So time to buff up your charisma stats, my boy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least we know it. <laughs> yeah. Again, that's another thing I like about this movie. Yes, they come to blows a lot, but otherwise, they do work together well as a team and do recognize They're when, yes, stuff won't be as easy. There seems to be some degree of self-awareness at the very least. Yeah. Again, it was a pretty much a risky move to make this a passing of a torch movie because, yes, you might run the risk of pissing off the old fan base, but I do feel that they honestly do do it in a way that, well, each fan base could enjoy. The old fan base. Like, yes. Like I mean, as much as I love, as much as I love the first Mission Impossible movie, 
the way it handled transitioning from character to character was kind of uh, iffy, to say the least. Yeah. I would, oh, yeah. Argue, uh, I would argue that this movie is the quintessential example of how you do a passing of the torch from an oh, older so, generation yeah. to a younger generation. Sure. Yes, uh, but yeah, well, 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 here, 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 I think you like this. Uh, the Harry Potter movie, well, at least the first a few Harry Potter movies were actually dubbed in Portuguese. Um, okay. But uh, to grant my previous point, that, well, it depends on what kind of story you're taking in, and telling in this specific context where it's used, because it, it can work fine. The, like the, the, the first record, Ralph, for example, where we have a second act breakup. But uh, the, when you take a look at the circumstances and context for why that happens, it makes perfect sense why it's happening in the context of the story um if i may it, i feel like the second act breakup is kind of like the um it's kind of like the liar revealed in the sense where it's not supposed to be an annoying cliche trope the problem is just it's been used that way so much that when you first yeah. hear about it you just tend to have that groan but if they can use it well then by all means use it well exactly this this is what this is a very important rule of, oh, of my Lisbon. story. Like, hey Pedro, your place got a mention. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, remember Jova, like uh, Lis uh, uh, Portugal and Spain. Ever since we finally, you know, stopped warring against each other, we've 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 been having strong relationships for a long time. At this point, it's just fine. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. uh yeah. Uh. No, one of the primary rules of writing is it's not what you're doing, it's how you do it that makes the difference. Pretty much. So like, how... Like, okay, uh, a good example of this is... is um, uh, a good example of this is the story of Dragon, uh, Dragon Quest XI. Like, uh, the, the, the story of Dragon Quest XI is just a hero chosen by fate that will, that will drive away the darkness and bring back the light. As Taylor can vouch for me, that's like the most cliche premise for a JRPG ever. Isn't that yeah. well the, the trademark of Dragon Quest having simple stories just told effectively? Well, well yes. yeah, that, that's exactly what, what, what was I getting at, Taylor. Yeah, despite the, the incredibly cliche premise that that game sports, the way it crafts its world, the way it crafts its characters, it does it so excellently that um, that it, you don't care. Like again, mm -hmm. it's not what you do; it's how you do it. That really makes a difference. As you can imagine, for um, Diego, this is a bit of a tough sight having to see his daughter literally being raised by his worst enemy. Uh? Ta da! Hooray. How does he do that? He's Batman. Oh, wait. <laughs> you know, honestly, Antonio Banderas as Batman would be kind of cool. Huh? It's too late, it? unfortunately. Here, here's the example you liked uh, uh, for the live reveal thing. A uh, goofy movie. Or another one that oh, yes. Fine. I actually thought you were going to mention that before you said Dragon Quest, but actually, that's to be fair, you could always just have Antonio play like one of the older Batman, essentially. Uh, so, uh, the biggest missed opportunity was not getting making a Batman Beyond movie and having Adam West play old Bruce. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Not to mention, that, not to mention there's that um, that faction that was from the Silver Age by Grant Morrison recouped. Uh, it's called, like, what, the the, the Batman of the different oh. nations, uh, and one of them is a figure that looks like Ronald like Zorro. I think that oh, was that's, Batman that's, Incorporated. That's but go on, Pedro. Dej uh, just thought of another one. Uh, um, Luca also has a second act breakup. There you go. Mm -hmm. so, so, again, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. Oh, Soul had a second... Oh, yeah, of, 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 of course, it's always about how you handle it, but I just feel like maybe we shouldn't be relying on it too much. That's well, obviously. Well, that, that, that's, that, that's oh. just something that's going to become, you know... Oh, I love this. But I don't, want it to, I don't want it to be like, oh, we subvert your expectations that you thought it was going to be a, a live review or a break. I was like, no, 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 that, 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 that's a, that doesn't help either. Anyway, I love this bit. <laughs> so as you asked him, I heard that you were going after the legendary thief. Well, he's hardly legendary. Oh, well, have you caught him already? It's only a matter of time. Hilarious. Huh. <laughs> 
We're filming you. Don't cough all over the wine, you imbecile. Well, he's covering his mouth, to be fair. I, for one, do not approve of this Zorro. <laughs> I do not approve of this Zorro. He's probably ugly underneath, despite his amazingly amazing moves. <laughs> In classic fashion, <laughs> throw all suspicion Who's off of the guy who actually is Zoro. Which is okay. again, it's, some, it's something you can, you, you can also tell that uh, Nolan took inspiration a bit from this dialogue who characterized the Bruce Wayne of, uh, mm -hmm. of Batman Begins. Sorry, well, the, Nick, writer, Nick. The, the writer of Batman Begins did that, my bad. Uh, David Goyer, yeah. Yeah. That was hell. Uh, woman's yeah, grasp that's a, of that's politics. A, that's, a thing, that's a thing that's the thing there. Yeah, Christopher Nolan over there making sure he kept his pants on, fortunately. But um well to, it makes perfect sense to go that route for all the reasons we've already explained. Yeah. So Again, you know you know you know what's the best way to hide a secret. <laughs> Push it out there plain in plain sight, but just tweak it a little bit. Okay, who's playing Ace Attorney? Hell, it was the first one, even. <laughs> yeah, I know. I could tell by the soundtrack. Yeah, it's it's still my favorite of the series. Soundtrack. Mm -hmm. soundtrack so there we are. Soundtrack, I mean. <laughs> For those of you who wanted an Ace Attorney Zoro crossover, you finally got it. You know, I mean, well, honestly, Phoenix, having, Phoenix having to defend, uh, you know, a vigilante. Well, okay, that's kind of what happened in case free free, technically, a bit. Yeah. Uh, although it was the Kaito figure, which is more the master, the master gentleman, more than just a state of vigilante. Although yeah. he did, um, he did end up becoming a vigilante by the time of case free free. So as close as we can get, uh, sure. All right, give me my Ace Attorney loop on the third crossover. Where Phoenix has to defend Lupin in court. Sure, <laughs> like, why not? Yeah. I mean, look, yeah, look, 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 you're look. screwed. You know what, Dads? Phoenix has managed to defend Goro Majima from the Yakuza series. And also, <laughs> Heihachi, Kazuma. Mishima. Mishima. Yeah, Mishima. Mishima. Kazuya so, is the son. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Hey, Hachi Mishima. So he's uh, he's defended both one of the most insane Yakuza men and a Mishima. Make of that what you will, but he is a damn good lawyer. Hell, he even or defended... Or at least they accept any pay. <laughs> Hell, he even defended Galactus that one time. Huh. <laughs> Shall we dance? I was gonna oh, say that. Is this a, is this a pre-existing track or is, did James Horner do this one? It's James Horner probably wanting to be secretly a mariachi on his own. <laughs>
Yeah, you know, that's one thing I'll give James Horner. Despite whatever movie he's had to compose for, I don't think I've ever heard him give a bad score. Ever. Commando! I don't think I've ever heard him give a bad score. Yeah, this is just probably that. I have no idea what you're talking about. You mean James Horner? Uh, I didn't care much for his Avatar score. Personally, I thought it was just forgettable. Oh, right. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, at least it was music. I'll give it that. Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I'll still hold... Oh, no crap. Okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll still hold it wasn't bad. As for making it amazing, it was Avatar, like... Sure, sure, sure. Huh. <laughs> I actually liked his, um... His, for, his Amazing Spider-Man 1 score. I Me too, good. yeah. That one was pretty great like that theme that plays when he's doing that big swinging scene oh yeah i think that's my plus, I... with the crazy who was the composer who was composing instead for ams2 Hans Hans Zimmer. Zimmer. Hans Zimmer. right Which right i forgot my bad to what be fair, aside from that terrible electro theme, I actually did like There's the main that theme of that before they put to the <laughs> license song uh, but again that's a story for another time the one that goes dun, 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 dun. that one's good I swear, half the time he looks like... In, in some bits, he looks like Brian Cox. Huh. <laughs> kind of. So, yes, he's managed to get into the good graces of Montero, and possibly the good graces of Elena as well. Back Mark day. Yes. And so have I. I thought, uh, I thought they were gonna do a thing where, uh, where the, where Zoro would switch the map and, and put another picture there to make it look like a fool or something. <laughs> like I don't know, draw, have a picture of him. Um, with a red, not like it with something ridiculous. So the so the aim of the villain is to conquer one bit of California. Well, remember, Dibs, this is back when California was way differently shaped, and he intends to get quite a bit of land out of a, out of a deal. Is this is this what people thought? Is this what Texas looked like when they wanted to recede? Like, we're, we're, gonna be, we're gonna be our own country. You're <laughs> like, yeah, good luck with that. So here's the idea. Instead of fighting against Santa Ana, again, the man pretty much in charge of Mexico at the time, we'll buy California from him. Again, back in the day, it made sense, but to these, these days, it feels just so at, like, at odd, the idea of a con an entire country being potentially being sold to someone. Oh yeah, America got quite a lot of America from the Louisiana Purchase. Also Alaska from the Russians because that's hilarious. <laughs> oh goody. So he's going to take them somewhere. However, the carriages are blacked out. So it's mysterious. It's also to keep the way to its secret as well. It's a place that as far as the country of Mexico knows does not exist. Why is the music so ominous? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, 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 now this bit here reminds me of what he did in the first Amazing Spider-Man film. 
<laughs> El Dorado. A literal oh my god, that, gold. Oh, that cool, is, a DreamWorks movie. Oh no, the plan is to revive that crappy soap opera. No! <laughs> no, this is the funding they get to make that DreamWorks movie. So here's the irony. Technically, this gold would be property of Santa Ana, since, you know, it's on his land. So they're going to pay him with his own gold, marked to look like it came from Spain. Hilarious. So when you really get down to it, the villain's entire plan is a real estate scheme. High-end real estate, and one that will give him ultimate control of the land. And unfortunately, he's mining this gold with, well, slave labor. Hooray. Yeah, make I mean, no mistake, these people are absolute scum. They do a good yeah. job of hiding it, but they are <laughs> scum. Con considering the time period? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, even the children. Children? Why is no one thinking that show about the children? I am not quote I'm not commenting on that remark. Hey, Free Finger Jack Remember him as part of Morietta's gang from earlier. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was gonna say, I'm Zorro. <laughs> no, 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 Dwibs. Harrison's not Zorro, he's Zoom. Shot. Well, <laughs> uh, sir, his body's twitching. <laughs> uh, I don't think he, sir, wait, I don't think he's dead. I saw his body twitching. No, 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 don't worry, we're gonna see him die. See, ah, he's even bleeding thought, uh, from the mouth. I thought, um, so he's, yeah, so he's not quite dead. I thought it was a case of, um, the actor uh, couldn't play so dead well. He's only mostly oh, so dead. Like... In his dying moments, he got to see a familiar face. Almost like it was destiny. That's right, it was me, Barry. I ruined Zoro's life. Again. You know, I can't see potentially Zoom trying to do that in order to not prevent the creation of bad men. Just a little grooming of the horse. Hope we get it better behaved. Oh. Good afternoon, my daughter. I mean, uh, uh, mistress. Ha 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 ha. 
It's hilarious. Uh, also, I love also, how I love how his name is Bernard. You know, typical butler name. <laughs> yeah, I, I was I was gonna say. Uh, I think I think this is this is the scene where Anthony could just use his normal accent. <laughs> Also, De La Vega did have a servant yeah. uh, in the original series, uh, but I don't know if it was like a constant thing or not. Hmm. How do you know that? Uh, dude, you're blowing your cover. Dude, okay, give him credit, Dad. It's his daughter who he hasn't seen in how long. Like, would you be able to keep your cover especially well, given the yes. emotional value? I like you. I'm built different. So, yes, yeah, supposedly her mother died giving birth to her, her father says. Uh-huh. Mm, you can see he says that through gritted teeth. Two, actually. About 20 years ago. Hey, I'm 20. It's just a very, very lucky coincidence, so, you know. Yes. Which is funny, because at this point, Catherine Zeta Jones was nearly 30. I'll give her this, she certainly looks 20. I recognized that voice back when I was three months old. Very good memory. It's a thing that Diego did mention at the beginning. It seems that the child Gloria recognized his voice or something. <laughs> it turns out that does play a part in this book. So let's have a little chat, mano y mano. That was that that, that is a uh, that that is that is known as something incredibly ridiculous, and yet in eleven years' time, someone would try and make that a serious plot point in a movie. Seriously, District Nine. Oh God! Yep. Again, Jova, the idea of uh, gaining uh, oh, powers by consuming which, a specific. Uh, care for a drink? Uh, He's testing. You know what? Yeah. Not thirsty? You don't know this guy, do you? Anything you were, you were saying to you? Wait. Oh, don't worry. I'll, I'll wait for a second. And there's Free Finger Jack's hand. Yes, as I mentioned, Harrison Love kept parts of the people of the gang that he killed as a memento of sorts and to prove that he was the one who did it. Some people called him a madman for that. Imagine! <laughs> they just uh, don't understand his, his being. You know, how, many, how many brothers were in that pack <laughs> that he killed? Um, let's see. Well, okay, okay, okay. The head is that of his brother. The hand is that of the free-fingered man who he just killed at the mine. I hope there isn't a third one, because otherwise he'd kill either cut off his dick. I mean, you need to complete a set, uh, you know. That's... Yeah, head, head, finger, head, hand, dick. Yeah, they are. There's the so, yes. There's the trifecta. 
So yes, in order to cover for his identity, he needs to drink from that. Otherwise, oh. yeah. Something to disgusting. Yes, but he had to do it to cover his identity. Yeah, but what normal person would do that? He had like... He's not a normal person. I'm sure he'll take it well. Oh my god, I can't believe I drunk my brother. Yeah, he didn't take it well. Mm -hmm. Again, that's a thing. That was a huge dig Captain Love made at him because he noticed the reaction he had to the free-fingered man. Again, one thing I do love this movie for is how dangerously, dangerously competent the bad guys are. Also, dreams, uh, again, the idea of gaining something by consuming uh, a human p body part uh, corresponding to what you want uh, is as old as time, you know? Very superstitious uh, as a thing. Yeah. That's just the way I was doing District 9 was extremely... I still okay. actually had to see the movie, actually. District 9 is a special it's space case. It's space, it's space racism, the movie tale. Oh, I know that. It's that again. Again, it seems that it's another case of this one stuff because I hear also from the original commentary that you guys did not like it. But apparently, at anyone that I know in my country here actually loves it. So I want to see what the fuss is about at the very least. Mm -hmm. I mean, if people like it, fine. Just, you know, I, don't... I still say that Blomkamp's best film was uh, Elysium. Elysium, yeah. And even then, that movie still wasn't very good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I mean, I personally think that um, Salto Copley was better in Elysium than he was in District Nine, and we can definitely mm -hmm. agree that Elysium was better than Chappie. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the movie that even the the, the Bloomcamp fans don't like. So, even though it's basically the same movie, so that's the thing. Maybe, maybe that's part of the reason. So here's one woman left from the old age who recognizes Elena as the daughter of Diego de la Vega. But this, of course, confuses Elena because, well, yeah, that's impossible. As far as she knows, she's the daughter of Don Rafael. Huh. And this is where the central theme does come into play here. Weighing revenge against justice. Revenge would be simply going after Captain Love. But Alejandro is beginning to realize, hey, you know, the fact that people are dying is maybe something I should focus on more despite my obsession. The original Zoro mask. A little guitar that played just then. Oh yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's, let's, oh. let's, continue, let's continue our grand plan to take over this bit of Cal That's California. That's the thing. Was the truth. Tar is um, regarded as basically the national instrument of uh, the Iberian Peninsula. So, mm -hmm. a guitar, like there's the Portuguese guitar and the Spanish also have their own variant of the instrument. Oh boy, here we go. How's that for a return that Zorro's back? Oh my god, it's um, Zod? Neo before Zorro. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing, though. Um, and here he is, uh, the first time in the Mexican variation of the Zorro costume. That's a thing, though. I wonder, I wonder if he's like, I wonder if, he, if we ever try to rationalize. Oh, come on. There could be someone different whose, whose name begins with Z. 
Yeah, one who has a bone Robert. to pick with you. Oh, that's he. Well, uh, oh, but about uh, well, dibs in that case. Well, dude, believe it or not, they kind of do that twist in Swan Princess Eight. Oh gosh. <laughs> also, uh, I if if that helps you. Also, I do oh. love I do love that line. It's not just one man. It's it's Zoro. Damn it! Trust me, like Stuart Wilson's character Montero here still remembers all the grief Zoro gave him back then, and he knows not to underestimate him. However, Harrison Love has a plan here. See, if Santana finds out that the gold that they're paying him with comes from his own land, he'll butcher them like cattle. Harrison Love's idea? Blow up the mine. Leave no witnesses. So yes, that means including all the workers. I love the look that even Montero hesitates in realizing, Okay, maybe even I have to say no to that. Well, even better. Get, get the uh, oh. get the address book. Find everyone whose name begins with the letter Z and kill them. Again, I love that bit. He checks, notices the map is gone, immediately calls for the guards. Ain't gonna leave anything up to chance. Same Zora was waiting for him. Like a bitch. But keep your backup weapons. Yeah, no. Zoro's got him covered there, too. Yeah. <laughs> so much for the backup. What are you gonna do? Slap their ass? You'll see. So, how about a little duel? One me, one me, bitch. Uh, Mr. Zora, you do know it take one mistake, I could just grab my gun and shoot you. Actually, no, he already took his gun out and threw it to the floor. Yeah. I've had the guns of the guards. Uh, yeah, long barrel rifle, that's way too much trouble to pull in the time that Zoro could then that stab him. That is true. That is true, Dreamsa. I love how he jogs up there and then immediately starts wailing on him. Great acting performance on Stuart Wilson's uh, bit is the face he makes. Like, you can tell he's going, God damn it, I literally dealt with this before and now I'm doing it again. Man, man what's with all these old men being able to still fence? Oh, yeah! I... They're in their prime. It's called being classy as fuck. Pretty Magic. much. Like, my, I, that's one thing I like about Montero. He still is willing to get his own hands dirty, too, despite being the leader. Okay. Yeah, I'll just spend there is at this point. It's 38. Oh, oh yes, and by the way, Banderas did insist on doing all these uh, stunts himself as well. I mean, why not? Uh... God damn it, do you know I mean, how expensive recently... that candle bra was? <laughs> I mean, recently Banderas has been going through a bit of a career renaissance. He was in the second SpongeBob movie. Mm -hmm. And um, he's going to be in the, the next Puss in Boots film, Indiana Jones 5. Nice. And, um... <laughs> oh, wait, don't you mean Uncharted? Uh, no, no he's, in, he's in both Uncharted and Indiana Jones uh, 5. Classic. Is different? Yes. It's covering all his bases. Also, there is word that there may be a new Zorro film with a crossover with, uh... Um... God, what's it called? Um... Uh, Django Unchained. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, 
No, I mean Sony. Sony do what? both of those. Yeah. Bye -bye. Oh, well, they do, to be fair, Sony do own both those films. So. I'm like, sure, that, that 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 has as much energy as the the Sony leaks where they were planning on making a Men in Black Jump Street crossover. Oh goody. Whoa. Yeah. Hold on. I mean, yeah, fair enough. Hmm. Well, when you put it like that... Like, was that a so, sword? Was that a sword, or were you just happy to see her? <laughs> there we go, big fight. Spain versus Wales. Who will win? Uh, <laughs> round, round, this is, well, technically this is round two, since you already fought Hopkins earlier. Okay, next round. She's just horny. Actually, Dad, uh, fun fact about that. I'll share it with you when it becomes relevant. Oh boy, here it comes, the iconic bit here. I think I see where this is going. Give him credit, he managed <laughs> give him credit, he managed to do that without cutting a lock of her hair. Also, Dad's fun fact, Catherine Zeta Jones says that she was very aroused during this part of the scene, actually. So, uh Yeah, she was horny. A, a girl a girl in in her prime meeting Antonio Banderas. Understandable. Getting okay, to sword? Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anything against that. Getting to sword fight and make out with him, like <laughs> oh. Exactly. And now you can see where a lot of Puss and Boots' mannerisms came from, Dwibs. Yep. Well I mean, I have seen I have seen this film in full before. It was just a while ago. Oh you have? Yeah. Uh, going to need the hat back. Please uh yeah, it's kind of it's kind of one of my trademarks. Oh, this is awkward. Nothing else happened. Uh he was very vigorous, father. <laughs> I bent him over the railing. I mean, uh, he was very vigorous. <laughs> I absolutely class swords with him, father.
Hey, we're getting better at this with Tornado. Don't! Wait, I wasn't ready to be entirely. Let's go. <laughs> I wasn't ready yet. <laughs> you said let's go, the horse listened. Uh, I'm not ready, come back. Oh, fuck. It's okay, we'll have to find a way I'll to catch up. How depressing is that uh, there's more chemistry between, you know, Antonio Banderas' character and uh, this horse uh, in this sh relatively short amount uh, in the movie, or minutes in the movie, than in most of the seasons of Spirit Running Free between uh, Lucky and quote-unquote Spirit. Uh, oh, that show really ruined you guys, and that, huh? And that's when the show remembers that, you know, Spirit is supposed to be a thing. In his own Andrew, series! You have, no, you have no goddamn idea. It's not even a case of, oh, it's so popular, we need to check out. Nobody fucking cared about this thing. Yeah. No, we're, we're the ones no, who are no, basically... I, <laughs> I, I can trust me. I, I, I sat through four Swan Princess movies in the span of a month. Oh god, let me put it yeah. like this. The Spirit Riding Free <laughs> series makes the Swan Princess movies seem almost Disney caliber by comparison mm, i said uh, I, almost I, 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 not the, exactly though the, 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 depends on which of the movies you're talking because i will argue movies five six and seven are just mm, just as bad as that we'll see you oh You just got teabagged. <laughs> this mook cannot catch a break. Like, seriously, first the cactus, then the barracks, then he literally gets thrown by Zoro, and now this. Come on, you didn't even try. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm pulling out my vacation days. Yeah, he, he has earned it. Didn't even try. <laughs> to be fair, dwibs, dwibs, dwibs. Jumping on top of a horse is not as easy as Zoro just made it look. I mean, he could try it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but then again, yeah, we have to have the guard, the prophetic guard, getting owned a bit. So now we have a map which can lead us to the canyon and the mine. Funny how they lose their facial hair as the film goes on. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, Antonio Banderas with facial hair look, does look a bit off. At least to me. <laughs> how weird was it? I mean, that was fake facial hair, Deji. Also, um, Anthony Hopkins as well is a bit off to me with facial hair. I'm more used to his shaved look. So now he's not like uh, Saigon. So now Diego reveals the truth about what happened, and this the is a matter about twenty years ago. So this is the matter here. While he has been teaching Alejandro, you know the values of justice over vengeance, he himself has that issue to deal with here. Could... He simply could just take his daughter, and you know technically he doesn't owe the country anymore. They have a new Zora that he has trained and proper, but would it be enough? Yeah. Actually, no, I'm pushing 40, actually. That's too young. <laughs> Frustrating. But to his credit, he did make sure that they do have a Zoro. 
as you can imagine, things aren't sitting too well with uh, the Dawn here. <laughs> Are you willing to put that up to a challenge, sir? Sure, a track record of horses in this movie, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, fine, the will just stand there, find him then. Literally from the shadows. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my uh, wife. Yeah. Wait a minute. I didn't kill your wife. One of my guards did. Again, he apologized by shooting him. Isn't that enough? Yeah, I mean, come on, man. What more do you want from me? Call for a leader. Yeah, we're going to pull this out now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd be quick about it, man. Zora's got a sword pointed at my neck. I mean, I could just pull out my gun and shoot him. Well, I mean, that's the thing, though, Deji. Um, who'd, 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 who'd get the weapon sorted first? Him getting his gun out or uh, Zoro or we've already... His blade pointing at his neck. Pretty it's much, more like, yeah. do you want to test? Do you want to push your luck? It's kind of like that classic uh, imagery stand still in Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. I have no idea what you're talking about, so I'm just going to forget that. Uh. Okay, uh, Elena, prepare to have your entire life turned on its head. We're both Welsh. Cheeky. Cheeky breaky. That said, this is a game of wits to play. If he just kills Montero right there and then, then the truth dies with him. Yep. Yeah, hmm. shut up. Did not want history to repeat itself there. Why do you still want to kill me, man? I told you a thousand times! I didn't kill your wife! Well, you coming to my house led to her death. I didn't know that was gonna happen, did I? Also, you did stick me into a godforsaken prison for 20 years. That didn't help matters. Hmm. <laughs> Power move. Let us never speak of this again, okay, daughter? Ah, speak of what? Exactly. <laughs> Good, yeah. good, 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 good. Already a good start. For the 
love of God, stop calling me Brian! Damn it! Trapped in the wine cellar! All there is to do is to drink this wine! Yeah, exactly. And that wine will be my problems plan. away. I will, I'll drink the wine and then pretend I have to go to the bathroom. Actually, I will have to go to the bathroom so that I can, uh, so that I can defeat the guards. Oh, hello there. You seem to have a gun to your back. Oh. Hmm. Why did you have to point a gun at me? You're my boss for one of them. Because you wouldn't listen to reason on, on this matter. Okay, so now the Again stage is set. Again with the wolf in there, in there. Why did, why did uh, Jimmy Boy put a, you know, this wolf howling sparse the beat in the, in the score? I guess because it's to show the could... scope and scale. Alright then! We're gonna blow this up in five minutes. Oh shit, I, I said it out loud. Don't tell them yet. <laughs> hmm. Rita Repulsa's creaming herself for some reason. I shouldn't know why. Does she love gold? By that, I mean... Yeah, uh, yeah, the, uh, the 2017 Rita Repulsa, I mean. Where's uh, Krispy Kreme? Yeah, I know, right? Come on. <laughs> yeah, I, that, that's why. That's what I'm gonna do. When we eventually do the Power Rangers 2017 movie, I'm gonna have a box of Krispy Kreme with me. <laughs> I don't even know what that's supposed to be like. Pastries? Or... Donuts. Yeah. And look at this. A hooded figure is here to give the water. Yeah, it could literally be anybody. There's the last bit of gold being hauled up. Oh, perfect. We're ahead of schedule. <laughs> I just want you to know, all workers, it has been an honor with your service. And we intend to send you on a well-earned trip to the heavens above. Gee, thanks, I guess. You're I'm welcome. really glad that's how, I'm really glad that's how you viewed my years of service. <laughs> the Pentrum plan is great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean it's fast. Swift pension service. And it'll all be over soon. You won't even have to pay taxes after you're done. Okay, first things first, stop that batch of gold. Hi. Yeah, he doesn't even hesitate. Give him credit, they did make sure to shoot first. That'll stop it. For the time being. And you know what that means, though? If the gold's down there when the dynamite blows, well, no gold. gold. All yeah, right. because your gold really isn't fast. Yeah. All right, your retirement's gold. been postponed. Yeah, because, you know, gold really isn't that strong of a metal. <laughs> yeah. 
For as valuable as it is, it can get destroyed relatively easy compared to a lot of other metals. How old was Martin Campbell in 1964? Oh, he's going to enjoy this. Hey, just in time. Are you going to give him a sword to give him a fighting chance? Oh, he's, <laughs> it's okay. He, no. He's got his own sword. Up here. What? Oh, what the idiot. I can't what? believe myself yeah. right now. Why did we uh, idiot to, to put the sound I effect? Yeah. Hey, while yeah. we're talking about inspiration, you can tell that Tango took inspiration from this sequence as well. Oh, yeah, fun uh, fact! Yeah, yeah, at that point, Jerva Martin Campbell was only twenty. So. Oh, fun fact! Actually, the glint off of his sword—that wasn't a digital effect. That was all practical. It took him three tries to get it I just right to that end of the film. Oh. Yeah, no, I know about the scene was trying to pan out, like, don't bring a sword to a gunfight, but no. That's the thing. Zoro allowed him to have a sword fight. He wants to prove that he's the better man. Now stay down in the dirt where you belong. As you can imagine, Alejandro's going to enjoy this as well. Overall, this is a good day for the Zoros to finally work off some much-needed aggression. Okay, this is a bit stupid, bro. What, this right? is just like Le this is just Legolas riding on that shield in two towers. No, just just no. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get the pressure off Zoro. So let's build up the pressure here. Was this a, was that an attempt to cross over Zoro with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater? I oh, sorry, sure. no, sorry. no wait, no wait, no wait, sorry, sorry. Tony Hawk skateboarding. I I don't know. Yeah, because basically Jova we could they didn't we didn't call the first game Tony Hawk's Pro Skater because if you put the words pro and skater together, it makes a really bad word here in Britain. We <laughs> changed it to Tony Hawk skateboarding. Same uh, reason why Slay Cooper was called Slay Raccoon. <laughs> what a class, man. And it's here where he effectively has lost Elena. Elena had some doubts that he might still be her father, hence why she intercepted. However, let's be honest. What father would really use their kid as a shield like that? A bad father? Huh, where'd he go? It looks like a He-Man of a beard. Teleports behind you. <laughs> this is personal. He... Actually, this is personal. I love the smart aleck nature of it. And yes, I can really tell James Horner composed this with scores like this. Because Horner really does love his horns. Well, he's called Horner. <laughs> Guess he decided to live up to that name. Got him. But was he also horny when he composed this? 
Um, given the, the fires in the background, know. I wonder. <laughs> Power move. He scarred him all while revealing his secret identity. Which is pretty much the sign that, yeah, this was meant to be it for him. I don't know. Uh, Mask of Morrow isn't a very catchy name. <laughs> it makes you very close to be saying a Mask of Moron. <laughs> Which will be fitting probably for oh, the next movie. Come on. Oh, come on! Okay, suddenly the retirement plan is back on the plate. God, they're like WWE when it comes to releasing their wrestlers. <laughs> the w okay, I I'm asking a probably dumb question. Was there a scenario in the WWE where... There was this kind of scenario where it was like a fuse that a bomb was going to blow up the ring or something. Um, <laughs> what, 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 oh, uh, that. oh my god. They uh, hey, what, 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 okay, okay, okay. They tried oh. to do that. Oh, this bit. Uh, unfortunately, the explosion <sighs> was underwhelming because there was a mess up at the last minute. So it became oh, a bit of oh, wow. Yeah. You went there. Of course, it worked. He got Zoro angry, and he attacked in anger. Big mistake. Now he's without his hat okay. and without his weapon. What's what with the people screaming in this movie? Everyone screams very unnaturally. Raw, hard emotion. Should have called this movie Ma of Zoro. <laughs> With his own sword. Um, in case you're wondering, when it comes to fencing, killing a man with his own sword is considered one of the biggest disrespect moves you can do. Only ace by hitting him in the back. And yes, he even takes off his mask just to show him. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah, the yeah. That from you from Wales Heart, I stab at V and something like that. But it's not over yet. <laughs> That's okay, Alejandro. I'm part of the speed force. <laughs> so killing me is pointless. Weighed down by the very gold he was going to sacrifice all those people for. That you see, is this is rich. why Kazuya looked before he after he threw Midman. Okay, okay, you want the gold? Fine! Here's your own personal golden shower! Good luck! You are going to die anyway. <laughs> ah, now that's rich. Literally. <laughs> we got Brilliant. Oh. Brilliant. Zorro, directed by Josh Wheaton. Uh. Hey, dude, that's all fine. Maybe stare at her uh, later and let us out. Yeah. Time and place. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what if you were saying that and we blew up? That would have been an awkward time to profess one's love to each other. Mind, you would have blown up as well, so karmic justice. What? All practical effects, did. I mean... What did you think was going to happen? That we're going to go, ha ha, fooled you? Also, I heard, that, I heard a, a tiger roar. I, who was the responsible for adding these sound effects in this movie? Yeah, it's like, the huh. sound editor. Or Martin Campbell. Oh, know. Martin. Oh, let me see, it was the sound editor. I mean, he was the director, so ultimately all decisions fall on him. Let's see. Best sound effects award. Apparently, David McMoyler. He was actually, uh, yeah, he was actually nominated for an Academy Award for Best Sound Effects Editing. What about this movie in general? Was it actually nominated for awards? Yes, it was. Okay. Were they good awards? Yes, they were. Because if I just got nominated for a Razzie, <laughs> like what would, what would the Razzie be for? Uh, worst five seconds in a movie? That's uh, sorry, Dweebs. Uh, we have seen previously that uh, a lot of times the Razzie nominations make no fucking sense. The thing, anyone? Oops. Not just well, that, also the Shining. Not... And also, not to mention half the worst act. 
actor nominations. Like Tom Cruise in The Mummy. Like, he wasn't bad in the movie. Come on. Uh, that's for another day. So Elena recognizes Diego de la Vega as her true father. But alas, he has been wounded by, um... Gunshot. Yeah, I miss, I miss the gunshot. Why it's... is it every time people reenact with their fathers, they always die when they do it? As sad... I, thought I, would, I thought I would have to be that one. As sad as it is that he does die, it is a good way to go out. He goes out helping save a ton of people. He finally gets to defeat his nemesis, as well as kill the other guy, too, in a very karmic fashion. And at least he knows that his daughter will be alright and good. All while passing down the torch to a new proper Zoro. No, she wouldn't, Jova. She'd be in the next movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the worst thing, is that, thing um... ever, but yeah. The interesting thing is that uh, the Mondo anime... Focuses on Diego rather than Alejandro. Well, yeah, well, yeah, well, most, yeah. Most, most series do. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah. Um, fun fact. Um, the movie was originally supposed to end with um with Anthony Hopkins' character dying, but um but they decided that that was too um depressing of a note to end the movie on. No, I'm good. The series and ends so up... um, yeah, yeah, Spielberg and Campbell came to an agreement on that during post-production. So three months after filming ended, they filled this bit. There was also an alternate ending where he meets up with Santa Ana as well shot. So here he is telling the story to his son, Joaquin, who he named after his brother. I'm sure this, ch this child will eventually grow up to be a great kid character. <laughs> That is a mm -hmm. there's a sunset in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do you have any better ones? Uh? <laughs> because I'm hoping to suggest you also, you know. They say that kid's first word will be Zoro. Sure. Aww. In Spy Kids. <sighs> well, I'm sorry, I have to uh, I have to leave you in favor of Carla Gugino. Also, what year was instead the, the haunting? Uh, the the new the remake of I the haunting? I think that was 1999. <laughs> Oh god. One year after, after this, Catherine Zeta Jones starts in a much worse movie. Like, I mean, is it better or worse than Legend of Zorro? Worse! Worse! worse oh uh, god, okay, worse. Okay, I can tell you this. Uh, the Hunting kind of entertains me more. I will say that. Uh, Legend of Zorro is just depressing and boring. But it's not annoying. Again, it does have good moments, but sadly. And here we are with the film began. Yeah, directed by the last minute What's replacement this? of Levi and this, Campbell. This, course, this bit of a score sounds like it's from Star Trek. Well, I mean, James oh Holden no, it's did, a song. I mean, he did, he did score Star Trek 2 and 3. <laughs> yep. So oh this my is... god, it, it really is a, the song that's writing the tide. But, yeah, I, 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 I have a bit more understanding about this whole trend, but it's not the place for me to actually explain it. Again, so, to be fair, the song here is based off of the lullaby sung to Elena, so... Mm -hmm. yeah, this is Shame the they could not incorporate the classic Zoro theme in some fashion. Hmm. It's a I'm duet. sorry, it, it, it feels so surreal to have this kind of song associated with Zoro. <laughs> well, I've heard, uh, I think, um, I think I've there's heard... no post-credits in Java. 
No, no I just sadly, I mean, no. Zora will I'll not be added to the event. Invited Avengers, to the Spider-Man yeah. initiative, but yes. I mean, I've heard, I mean, I've heard, uh, I've heard weirder um, uh, ending songs to a movie, but uh, this I is think, still uh, really high up on I the think list. even the Anastasia movie had something similar to this, but uh, it's like none that great. I mean, either. it'd be like... It'd be like if uh, it'd be like if Peter Pan ended on Nirvana. Oh. <laughs> All right. Final thoughts. Who wants to start? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll. Can I go first briefly since I have to go in a bit? Sure. So yeah, yeah. This film was really solid. Um, cause especially considering all the pre-production um, issues the film was having with the constant change of directors and uh, stars. I mean, from mm -hmm. what I heard, the actual production process was fine. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so yeah, I mean, Banderas is great as Zorro, as well as Hopkins. Uh, you know, Catherine Zeta Jones is also pretty good as well. Um, it's it's but it's also very uh, entertaining. Um, I mean, it's a swashbuckler; it kind of has to be entertaining. Mm -hmm. And. Yeah. And, and the villains are, um, I mean, I mean, the I would say they're, um, they're, they're stellar, but they but they get the they get the job done, and they're you know evil enough, especially with the bit where they're gonna blow up the slaves. What a retirement the gold. plan! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, um, I mean, again, it'd be swift at least. And again, you won't have to pay taxes after you're retired. Uh, well, well, they have to tend, well, they still have to have their graves tended to, that will cost them a bit. Eh, don't you see the rubble will make for a perfect makeshift grave? <laughs> uh. Yeah. Seriously, uh, screw those guys, and it's good that they got what was coming to them. And, um, and, you know, James Horner, you know, late, the late James Horner, you know, he does a, uh, does a good job of, you know, the more, uh, especially considering... He normally does films that are straight up orchestral, as opposed to you know adding bits of um, culture in the film. So like in this case, you know Hispanic um, culture with, it, with the instruments. Mm -hmm. You know, and the story is basic enough, but solid. Is you know, just the whole you know revenge story, but also uh, justice. How just how just revenge on its own is a bad thing. And together, and together, Antonio Banderas and Anthony Hopkins can be justice. <laughs> well, not Anthony Hopkins now, but yeah. Semantics. Yeah. Um, so yeah, overall, a really, uh, a really solid and fun affair, which kind of makes me dread Legend of Zorro even more. Oh boy. We'll get to it eventually. Again, I don't think it's the worst thing ever, and there are still things to like about it. But yeah, it we'll, have, we'll have to do what the film did in real life and wait seven years for it. Oh boy. Yeah, ask me them. All right. Um, Dead Dead. Dead. Well, that was a very excellent movie we just saw. Mm hmm. It's no, one of my favorites. I really liked it. Oh, yeah. It's one I of... can see. Yep. Uh, yeah, I honestly have nothing to complain about. This movie is an instant 9 out of 10. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It does a great job at passing, passing the torch. He understands Alejandro's struggles, and he learns that there's more to... that there. I don't want to say more to life than just revenge, but he not realizes that he can't... Revenge is... Ah, God, what... Let me put it like this. While revenge can be nice, uh, he realizes that it's not enough to facilitate a light with, and how his obsession yeah. with revenge does risk clouding his vision and, you know, being able to save the people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You get one. <laughs> Nice. The, all the characters were great. The, the the villains were entertaining, especially learning that one of them was the reverse Flash. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> it's funny, ain't it? Yeah. And oh, over this this is a really good movie. I want to rewatch it. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, regarding revenge, I think the best thing about the revenge in this film is like, well, it's revenge that's got 
mainly as, you know, something that comes along with the justice served at that point. And it's at a point where, yeah, they do absolutely need to be killed. It's not just something that's lusted after, gotten, then, well, then forgotten. Anything else, Dutch? Yeah. No, that's it. Okay. Hey, uh, oh, no, this is excellent. Still, if you ask me the best... Uh, the, the best iteration of Zoro, uh, you can because it's just it's just executed to pretty much perfection. Like the characters are all perfectly, it's perfectly cast, perfectly written, perfectly uh, executed. It, it's like Deji said, it's just uh, there's just so little to discuss because this is a movie that just basically just goes out of its way to just do everything it wants pr pretty much flawlessly. Mm -hmm. And it's a ton of fun, it's it's thematic, and it just works excellently. So Again, it's a classic, and I mean, there's not that much against. Like, it's it's still Antonio Banderas is still my personal favorite Zoro, just because I feel like he like there's just no matching his charisma. So, Dad, can regard. you see why they got Antonio Banderas' puss and boots now? Yeah, it was a direct reference to Zoro, basically. So, I I appreciate whenever movies do that. Yeah, puss is mm -hmm. literally Zoro's persona when you get down to it. <laughs> yeah, that was the whole idea. You know, it was meant to be a, a a tribute to this movie. And now we're actually getting a new Puss in Boots movie. Thankfully, getting back Antonio Bender is like you know you can do whatever with Shrek, but as far as I'm concerned, puss is just something that you can't mess up. Like hell, even in Shrek the Third, what they did well, puss still was awesome in that. And then Shrek Forever After, where they made him fat. Because <laughs> it's uh, funny. Okay, to be ah. fair, that was to show how messed up the timeline was, but... Yeah, know, yeah, and again, it, it was served for the more, the bigger scheme of things, but uh, we're digressing. Just yes, don't care about that movie. Okay, go on to. Sure, sure. It's perfectly serviceable as any other Zoro product for me. Um, again, as someone who grew up more with the original series, uh, um, which I did find fine for when I actually watched. Uh, um, this movie is just as well fine, technically. Um, again, I'm still a bit iffy on the idea that this has to be a passing of a torch kind of thing. I think it would have been just as fine if uh, if uh, Toro Banderas did play the OG Diego de la Vega, and this was basically just an extended episode of that kind of series, uh, you know? Um, I wonder if they did this in order to, because again, it was supposed to be a Zorro for the new generation, so let's uh, let's do this, uh, you know. Part of me does to, wonder to... if this was supposed to be like a sequel to the old movies. I don't know if that was the case. That said, I would say this in regards to it being a Zorro for the new generation, it does feel like at least one where people of both old and new can get into. So I, I wonder if maybe this, that was uh, the idea. I can tell this, it could have, considering especially how these days is more common this could have been so much worse you know so at the very least uh, i'm glad that it turned out the way it did which at least it's an entertaining product mm -hmm. that being said the the whole the general thing might not be the ideal movie for me well i do appreciate uh, on a technical level and what they managed to achieve uh, you know the story on its own it's serviceable but maybe just not uh, the the one for me but that's not to say that the movie is bad if anything it's uh, Pretty much solid. Basically, what Feder and Deji has said, technically. Um, less to be said is for the sequel, but that's a story for another time. So, Jova, please. What can I say? It is legit one of my absolute favorite movies of all times. It's a practical effects powerhouse. The casting is sublime. The acting is great. The villains are very intense and great. I think one thing no one else has really talked about that I really love is just how on point all the sword duels are. Like, don't get me wrong, a swashbuckler can do that, but man, the attention to detail here is amazing. Especially in the one mm -hmm. where Zoro literally has to take on both of the two main bad guys two on one. For as brief as it is, dual wielding rapiers is not easy, let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, how do you even... You have to be very good, which Antonio Banderas was, and thankfully became even better, thanks to Ben Anderson. In fact, he even shows off his fencing skills these days in some interviews. I think there was one with Jimmy Kimmel where he got to show it off and all that, where he's able to pretty much balance the swords on his feet, essentially, at this point. Regardless, though, holy cow, is this so just 
oozing with awesome factor. And it's not afraid to get dark either, with the bad guy literally preserving his brother's head and his best friend's hand just to get a rise out of him to make him blow his secret identity here and there. Like, none of these guys are playing around at all. And everyone pretty much gets a chance to be awesome. Alejandro, Elena, Diego, Rafael, and of course Harrison Love all do get their shots here and there. Mm. I mean, yeah. Um, it is a bit of a shame that Diego does have to die, but I'm willing to let it pass because they do it in a respectful manner, and he still gets to be awesome as all heck when he goes out. Again, he is technically the one who takes out both the guys with the gold. I mean, sure, Harrison was probably going to die anyway, but now he gets to have an amazingly nightmare fuel inducing scream to go with it as he's given a golden shower to his death. And what a death it was. It's so high octane and awesome, and well, yes, as you can imagine, there was a ton of demand for a sequel. But at the time, uh, Catherine Zeta Jones and Antonio Banderas didn't want to be defined by it, so they turned it down for the time being. Until they were in some, uh, Six lesser... years later. Yeah, uh, they were kind of in stuff like The Haunting and Ballistic X vs. Sever. And, well, they said, you know what? Maybe we would rather be defined by Zoro. <laughs> oh. Unfortunately, you can argue that it was a bit too late. But uh, yeah, re- that's re- a story for Legend of Zoro. Regardless, though, when this movie came out, it was a big, amazing hit. And Zoro, ever since then, has been back in the public eye in all countries now. He may have been maybe declining in America, but this movie has seen to it that he hasn't since. And while, yeah, mm-hmm. most people recognize him by Antonio, nowadays, even over here, we're familiar with the legend of Diego, especially with the stuff like the Mondo TV show and uh, apparently Zora the Chronicles. I have not seen that show, but hopefully it's good. And come to think of it, this has made me realize that, yeah, I should probably start looking into some Zoro video games to potentially do for the channel. God forbid they maybe did a game based off of this movie. Maybe it'll be better than the Popeye video game. There was a Popeye video game movie? Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, a Popeye movie video game? No, I, I meant Popeye game that just came out. Oh, it's I terrible. did That's not right. know about a Popeye game just coming out. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> I'll explain once we're done recording, don't worry. Regardless, though, that was The Mask of Zorro. And what a birthday gift. Well, would you say yeah, you guys enjoyed it? <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I definitely wasn't scared shit from, like, from the Wiz last year. There is, that, there is that. How ironic is it that a PG-13 movie scared you less than a rated G flick? Yeah, the Wiz Pop, was rated Like a G. puppet, I suppose. <laughs> well, we'll see you for what's next, folks. <laughs>